One of the themes of my journalism, almost for 20 years now, since I began writing about politics and doing journalism, has been that the American corporate media is far too subservient and deferential to the U.S. security state. One of the main reasons I started writing about politics in 2005 was because I had watched the media, not just the Fox News conservative media, but the supposedly liberal media, the New York Times, the Atlantic, the New Yorker, all unite behind the Bush administration in selling the Iraq war to the American people. And then I also watched them justify every erosion of civil liberty that was offered in the name of fighting terrorism. And so by the time I was writing about politics, it was mostly out of indignation and frustration about how mindless was the American corporate media in serving the often fake and false talking points of the U.S. security state. That was a major reason why I wanted to start writing was because I felt like there was all this dissent that was true that the American corporate media would not give platform to. And so I've seen many journalists, up close and personal, whose mission in life is to do nothing but repeat what the FBI and the CIA tells them to. And I've seen those people be the ones to thrive in corporate media. I've talked about that many times. The more you lie for the U.S. security state, the more your career will in corporate media will thrive. Nonetheless, there is no journalist, journalist, I mean, a corporate media employee with the HR title journalist, who is willing to serve the security state and mindlessly spread their lies, quite like Natasha Bertrand, the CNN intelligence correspondent. Only five years ago or six years ago, Natasha Bertrand was at some obscure site called Business Insider. And in 2016, she began becoming the queen of Russiagate insanity. She would print every insane story that was fed to her by the low levels of the CIA and the FBI about Trump and the Alpha Bank, the Steele dossier. I mean, she was on board with all of it. And as a result, she got rewarded. She was hired. She moved up that ladder very quickly. She first got hired away from Business Insider by MSNBC. Then she was hired by Jeffrey Goldberg in The Atlantic. Then she went to Politico. And then finally she landed at CNN, which is where she belongs. You see just her going up this ladder the more she lies. And her specialty is she's just open for business. She tells Langley, in the, the, the J. Edgar Hoover headquarters at the FBI, just, I'm here, just tell me what to say. And then she writes it down. And I'm not exaggerating. That is what her entire existence is for. Not only was she ground zero for all the Russiagate, uh, the worst and, and most obviously deranged expressions of Russiagate that she got from the FBI and the CIA and proved her loyalty to them, she was the person who did this. She was the first one while at Politico to publish the extremely damaging lie. And I say it was extremely damaging because the entire purpose of this was to manipulate the American electorate to vote against Donald Trump and elect Joe Biden in the 2020 election. The New York Post had been reporting incriminating stories from an obviously authentic laptop that came from the president's son that detailed all these ways that Joe Biden was helping Hunter and was working with Hunter in Ukraine and China to trade on Joe Biden's influence and name to generate profit for his son and for his family. And they were desperate to stop it. They were petrified this was going to help Donald Trump win because it made Joe Biden look like what he is, which is a lifelong sleazy politician who is incredibly corrupt. And one of the vulnerabilities he had was that Hunter Biden was being paid by a Ukrainian energy company while Joe Biden, his father as vice president, was running it. And that was what a lot of these stories were showing, the details of the sleaze. And so the CIA decided to invent an absolute lie that this, hunt, this laptop was not authentic. Instead, it was Russian disinformation. And they got together and they signed a letter saying this. And their first question was, who should we dump this on? Who's stupid enough to put their name on this and just go out there without asking any questions and just mindlessly repeat it? And the answer was obvious, Natasha Bertrand. That's what she's for. She exists to do that. She just lays there and they give her, they pour these scripts on her. 
And she picks them up and she reads them and calls it a day. So here from Politico, that was the very first story. Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinformation. Dozens of former intel officials say, quote, more than former 50 intelligence officials signed a letter casting doubt on the provenance of a New York Post story on the former vice president's son. Now, in the most minimally healthy media culture, that would have ended her career. Twitter and Facebook suppressed the story based on this lie. The media reported it over and over in the, in the run-up to the 2020 election. And then once Biden was safely elected, every media outlet started admitting that the laptop was actually authentic, including Politico. They have a young reporter, Ben Schreckenberger, who was on our show. He wrote a book called The Bidens, and he did all this shoe weather reporting that proved that the laptop was not Russian disinformation, as Politico through Natasha Bertrand and the CIA claimed, but was in fact fully authentic. And then the New York Times and the Washington Post and CNN and CBS News and all of them then did the same. She's responsible for a gigantic, massive fraud to say nothing of Russiagate. Now, she has a story out today that ties to another segment we're going to do on the games the Biden administration is playing, where they're pretending to try and convince their voters angry at them for supporting Israel that they're actually opposed so they keep leaking these stories that, oh, they told the Israelis, enough is enough. You need to be more careful. Stop killing so many innocent people. But it's all a ruse because Biden is a lifelong fanatical Israel supporter and still is and has told the Israelis and the public that he will finance their war with no conditions. So the Israelis know it's all show. They're just doing this because they need to assuage their voters. Oh, look, we don't want to look like we're standing always next to Israel, every, that every time you see a video of a dead baby in Gaza, don't blame us. We're actually pressuring the Israelis, even though they're giving the Israelis the bombs and the money that the Israelis use to do that. It's a sick game the Biden administration is playing and Democrats are playing. And Biden had the CIA, or the Biden White House wanted to have the CIA leak in a way that makes it look like the United States government is now turning against Israel, even though they're really not. So who do they go to? Obviously, you go to Natasha Bertrand. She writes down whatever you tell her to write down. I just want to show you how she described her story so you see the tactic she uses, the technique she uses. And again, this is what most of them use in corporate media. It's one of the reasons why corporate media is so corrupted. But she does it in such a brazen and unmitigated and unmasked way that on some level she's like a museum exhibit for understanding why the media is so rotted and specifically how they do it. So here she is on X promoting her own new story, exclusive. She always gets exclusives because they know that if they give her this first, she'll just say anything. This is what she wrote, quote, nearly half of the 29,000 air to ground munitions that Israel has used in Gaza since October 7th have been unguided, otherwise known as dumb bombs. Now, I, do I believe that that's true? It very well may be. The level of destruction in Gaza is anything but careful and targeted. The problem is that this is all that her reporting ever exists of. According to a new U.S. intel assessment. So do you see how her reporting works? And I put reporting in quotes. She makes a statement that sounds factual. She's saying nearly half of the 29,000 air-to-ground munitions Israel is using in Gaza have been unguided. And then there's a comma. And then always this phrase, according to a new U.S. intel assessment. She's like a seventh grader summarizing a book report by having read the cliff notes, only she summarizes CIA claims. Everything is that she ever opens her mouth and says and gets put on CNN to say is always this formulation, according to U.S. intel uh, sources, according to sources in the intelligence community. Here is the next paragraph. The U.S. assessment described to CNN by three sources who have seen it says that about 40 to 45 percent of the air to ground munitions Israel has used have been unguided. Quote, it's a massive civilian harm problem, said Brian Kastner. But again, here you see the same formulation. 
The U.S. assessment described to CNN by three sources who have seen it. So she didn't even see this report. CIA analysts or operatives or whomever in the Pentagon called up Natasha Bertrand. They have her on speed dial, I promise. And they said, hey, Natasha, you want an exclusive? We have a report, and we're going to tell you what it says. And she's like, yeah, yeah. And she sticks her tongue out. She wags it. She pans. She writes down what they tell her to say, and it becomes CNN's story. There's no other work that goes into it. There's no questioning of this. There's no critical scrutiny applied to it. There's no investigation to determine if it's true. Now, again, leave aside the substance here. This is the Biden administration trying to convince people, oh, look, we're turning against the war. That's why we're leaking this about the Israelis. It's a ruse. But for the moment, I just want to show you how everything that she does is nothing other than acting as a spokesperson for the CIA. When you stop and think about someone can do that and call themselves a journalist for a major media corporation, and believe me, every time I criticize her, there's people in the media who come and say, leave Natasha alone, she's a hardworking journalist. They don't see a problem with this because this is what they do. They are spokespeople for the U.S. government and specifically for the intelligence community and the military industrial complex. Here... She is in a separate tweet. She begins her tweet. Officials say, so everything that follows is what she's been told to say. Officials say the U.S. already expects allies to use U.S. provided equipment in accordance with international law. But the U.S. does not independently assess each Israeli strike the U.S. deems concerning or disproportionate. The U.S. leans on Israel to justify strikes after the fact. So all that was was what officials say. And I just, I have to say, I mean, even though I've been pointing this out for 18 years now, that this is what the media does, this one individual is so tawdry about it. She's so flagrant about it. She doesn't do anything else ever. She is the all but official spokesperson of the CIA and she has laundered lie after lie after lie and got promoted up the media ladder as she does it. It's just, she's not alone. I think maybe the only person who competes with her in terms of doing this so loyally is Jennifer Griffin at Fox, who tends not to repeat so much the CIA or the FBI, but the Pentagon. When Jennifer Griffin's mouth is moving, it means the Pentagon is speaking. I've watched Jennifer Griffin hold in her hand Pentagon talking points that were given to her and read that into the camera as if it's news. There's not a brain cell that's working in her head other than the ones necessary to be able to read what the Pentagon has told her to say. But in terms of damage done and in terms of lies disseminated, there's just nobody that competes with Natasha Bertrand. And yet she is paid by CNN a lot of money, was paid by The Atlantic before that, political before that, and the MSNBC before that. So you see how pervasive this tactic and, and, and coveted this tactic is in media outlets. She's paid by them to do exactly that. This is not a flaw. This is what she is paid to do because this is the real function of our largest media outlets. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.